Good morning. Welcome to Suncoast MCC. Thank you for your generosity to CHAPS this morning. The hygiene products you donated will help fill an important gap in the lives of the clients. And remember, you can share your generosity with Suncoast at offering time. Today is Mortgage Sunday, and we will collect the second offering to help with our monthly mortgage payment. We are sad to announce the passing of longtime member of Suncoast, Jean Balin. Jean passed away earlier this week. He was under hospice care in Santa Fe, New Mexico when he passed away. Please keep his family, friends, particularly our Greg Hallman, in your prayers. Jean had attended Suncoast since 2001 and served on our board of directors. Each Sunday after church, we have a designated prayer minister available. The prayer minister is stationed at the memorial tree and will be happy to pray with you for any special needs or requests you may have. Our pastors are out of the office and in Amsterdam and Norway for another week. Today, we are pleased to have Reverend Renee Phillips in the pulpit leading the worship. Please plan to be here next week when our very own Reverend Jean Hutter will deliver the message. Wednesday, June 27th, will be our next prayer surge. You won't want to miss this time to gather and share your prayer concerns with your Suncoast family. We will gather for spiritual centering with prayer and music. During this service, we light candles, sing, and pray for each posting on the prayer wall. Participants will also submit additional prayers for our world, our church, others, and ourselves. Collectively, we offer up our hearts to God and provide support to each other. Our first fundraising harvest dinner is quickly approaching on Friday, June 22nd, and will be hosted by Joe Davis and Reverend Tim Hanlon. Each dinner is limited to only 20 guests, and each will be held in the home of one of our Suncoast MCC families. Cost will be $20 per person, and tickets must be purchased in advance. See Dan Mullins for your ticket today. Mark your calendars for July 1st. We are having a pre-Independence Day barbecue. Following worship, you can get a hot dog or a hamburger, potato, potato salad, beans, beverage, and a cake for only $5. All the proceeds go to the church. Let the holiday celebration begin. For more announcements, please check out the clippings in today's bulletins or consult our electronic newsletter, Eclipse. Now, let us go forward in worship, living our faith. Please rise and join in our opening song, Have Your Own Way, God.
Have your own way, God. Have your own way. You are the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after your will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Have your own way, God, have your own way. Search me and try me, Savior, today. Wash me just now, God, wash me just now, as in thy presence humbly I bow. Have your own way, God, have your own way, wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Power of power, surely is thine. Touch me and heal me, Savior divine. Have your own way, God, have your own way. Hold o'er my being, absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit, till all shall see. Christ only always living in me. God, we are reminded of your grace-filled and creative hands on us and how your hands work through our hands in our world. You are the potter, we are the clay. God's hands on the universe, God's hands on us, molding, creating. You are the potter, we are the clay. God's hands on the universe, God's hands on us, sheltering, healing, holding, blessing. You are the potter, we are the clay. Our hands keyboarding, drawing, writing, painting, and still. You are the potter, we are the clay. Our hands praying, blessing, healing, receiving, and still. You are the potter, we are the clay. God's hands on the universe working with our hands on a day-to-day -day basis in our world and always. You are the potter, we are the clay. Amen. Please be seated. I am not Reverend Nancy. I am not Reverend Vicki. Just call me Jean. Um, in the name of our pastors, Reverend Vicki and Reverend Nancy, I welcome all of you to Suncoast. MCC. Do we have anybody here for the first time? We have one person. Okay. Welcome. If you do not receive the welcome packet, please pick up one from our hospitality, uh, our welcoming committee, and you will receive a door prize. Um, we are very honored and privileged to have Reverend Renee with us today. Reverend Renee belonged to us, but she was called to other duties at the parish, at the church in Sarasota. Um, as was mentioned, Jean Bellin has passed away. He's earned his angel wings, a longtime member of our community. So we pray for his family, and especially Greg Holman, who was his dear friend. Today there will be a celebration of life for Jackie Seeds at Shenanigans in Port Charlotte at two o'clock. Shenanigans was her hangout and they're having a celebration of life. 
So if you can make it, please come on down. Uh, now let us stand and welcome each other in love and friendship. I welcome you. Preacher's yelling at me to get moving now. Get to your seats. <laughs> Our first <laughs> song of gathering, I stand in awe. And I don't know it, so she's singing oh, really? with me. Oh, really? Oh, it's a pretty song. Beautiful song. You are beautiful beyond description. To In agony and deep affliction, cut off that I may enter in. Who can grasp such tender compassion? Who can fathom this mercy so free? You are beautiful beyond description. Oh. 
you may be seated. Thank you. And our second <laughs> song of gathering is something beautiful. reading this morning is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verses 1 through 4. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The word came that came to Jeremiah from God. Come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there the potter was working at a wheel. The vessel being made of clay was spoiled in the potter's hands who reworked it into another vessel, as seemed good to the potter. Be still and know that I am God. 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 Be still. rise as you are able for the reading of the gospel. A reading from the gospel of John. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. The disciples asked Jesus, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he would be born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When Jesus had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eye, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam which means sent. Then the man was, who was blind went and washed and came back able to see. 
The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Salaam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is Jesus? He said, I do not know. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. God. Oh, 
job, choir. I like that. It's a great song. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. So good to be here. It's been a while. <laughs> so, I was really excited. I think uh, Reverend Nancy must have called me like in January or something and said, could you fill in? Because I know you got a plan for those big long trips. I said, I'd be delighted. I said, I have no idea where I'll be, but uh, <laughs> whether I'll be there, I could be back here by then. I said, but I'd be happy to do that. And I am so thankful and grateful to be here this morning. I have missed you all and missed worshiping here and uh, singing with Gene, of course, <laughs> wherever he went. <laughs> I want to get a look. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> great. Um, I don't know if you remember, but I had forgotten um, that two years ago, um, Terry and I just had moved here, uh, the Pulse Massacre happened uh, just in a couple of days. And uh, you know how quickly sometimes those things go out of our, our minds. And we can't allow that to happen. And uh, they're doing a thing called Honor Them With Action. I don't know if you're aware of it. I wasn't. I got an email about that. And so if you think about it in this next month, uh, do something. Do something that will honor them with action. What that means is get involved. Make a donation to a, to a group uh, in their name. Uh, vote. My goodness, we have to get out and vote anytime we can. And, um, you know, support another place that, uh, that does some good work about, around LGBTQ um, resourcing. So just wanted to encourage you about that and that campaign. Um, would you join with me in a word of prayer? God, we're ever so mindful of your love and your grace for us. We're always thankful to be gathered in your holy name and to know that you bless us, that you call us good, that you've created us in your image with your own hands. So this morning we pray that we would open our minds and our hearts. We would hear your word, what you have for us to take from here and to share with the world to make it a better place. We pray, God, for all of those, those families and friends that lost loved ones in the Pulse Massacre. We pray for our brother Greg, who has lost his partner. We ask God that you would bring comfort and peace to him and to us who have lost a brother in Christ as well. We ask God now that we would be the clay in your hands. Not just today, but every single day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When you came in, I hope you got a little, a little baggie uh, with a piece of clay in it. Uh, I want you to uh, feel free to take that out. Some of you already have, not mentioning any names, Joe. Uh, <laughs> hopefully he got another one or two. Um, and those of you that are creative will enjoy it. Um, just feel free during my sermon to, uh, to take that out, mold it around. If uh, you have something in your mind, maybe you're going to make a heart or a cross or whatever you want to make out of this because it's uh, in your hands. And I want you to have this moment to be creative a little bit. And uh, I have a little clip just to give you some ins inspiration, I, I hope.
I didn't give you enough clay to make all of that. But. <laughs> but it's fascinating to watch, isn't it? It really is. You know, he had one shape and then all of a sudden it became so many different pieces on that wheel uh, just in that little bit of time. I want to begin this morning by reading a story about a vase. A grandfather and a grandmother were in a gift shop. And they were looking for something to give her gra their granddaughter for her birthday. And suddenly a grandmother spots this beautiful vase. And she says, look at this lovely piece of artwork. Shouldn't we have that? And he picks it up and he says, you know, you're right. This is one of the loveliest vases I have ever seen. Now at that point, something remarkable happened. Something that could only happen in a children's book or an animated movie, right? The vase talks to the grandparents <laughs> and the vase says thank you so much for the compliment but I wasn't always this beautiful instead of being surprised that the vase can talk right the grandfather says well what do you mean you weren't always this beautiful well says the vase once I was just an ugly soggy lump of clay but one day some man with dirty wet hands threw me on a wheel and the wheel started turning me around and around and around, so I got so dizzy, I couldn't even see straight. Stop, stop, I cried. But the man with the wet hands said, not yet. Then he started to poke me and punch me until I hurt all over. Stop, stop, I yelled. But the man said, not yet. And each time that I thought he was through, he would crumble me up and roll me up and punch me and poke me again. And finally he did stop. But then he did something much worse. He put me into a furnace. <laughs> it got hotter and hotter until I couldn't stand it. Stop, stop, I cried. But the man said, not yet. Finally, when I thought I was gonna burn up, the man finally took me out of that furnace. Then a lady began to paint me. And the fumes got so bad that they made me feel sick. Stop, stop, I cried. Not yet, said the lady. Finally, she did stop. But she gave me back to the man who put me back into another awful furnace. Stop, stop, I cried. It was hotter than before. But the man said, not yet, not yet. Finally, he took me out of the furnace and he let me cool off. And when I was completely cool, a really nice lady put me on this shelf next to this mirror. When I looked at myself in the mirror, I was amazed. I could not believe what I saw. I was no longer ugly and soggy and dirty. I was beautiful. I was clean. I was firm. She said, I cried for joy. And it was then I realized that all that pain was worth it. Without it, I would still be an ugly, soggy, wet lump of clay. It was then that I realized all the pain took on a new meaning for me. It had passed, but the beauty that it brought had remained. The scripture reading that we have today from Jeremiah says that God gave a message to Jeremiah and said, go down to the shop where the clay pots and the jars are made and I will speak to you while you're there. So I did as I was told and the potter working at his wheel and I saw him there. The scripture says, but the jar that he was making did not turn out as he had hoped. So the potter squashed the jar into a lump of clay and started all over again. Now you may ask, who is this potter? Well, we know that it's our wonderful God, right? that God is the potter, and that you and I are the clay, aren't we? Before any beautiful vase or piece of art is created, it first becomes a vision, a vision in that artist's mind. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not really good at art. <laughs> and so when anybody gives me a piece of clay, I see a piece of clay. <laughs> see what I've made so far. But... <laughs> And any art class really never helped me. Um, but I know that sometimes as, as art artists, 
they have sort of this vision already in their mind about they can see a piece of clay and they can see something already in it. Just like Joe made a beautiful angel already out of his little blue piece of clay. Now I look at that and I see just a big old lump of clay. But Joe saw a beautiful blue angel out of his. So let's look at the process that the potter uses in sculpturing a beautiful piece of pottery. The main ingredient is clay. And a potter searches for the right kind of clay. The clay in the ground isn't suitable. But the clay that is dug out deep in the ground, that's what they're really looking for. Then it's brought to the vicinity of the potter and allowed to sit for weeks. The material is then dumped into a cement lined tank or a wooden trough and it's covered with water. When the lumps have softened, then they're stirred into the water until all of them have disintegrated and it leaves sort of a thin slimy mud that's been formed out of it. And then it sits for another six months before it's ready to be used. Isn't that incredible? The longer it sits, the more improved it becomes. In other words, as the clay is taken from the ground, it's really not ready. It's not ready to be worked with. It has to be transformed into a usable state. And this process takes time and energy and patience from the potter. It's a perfect example of us, isn't it? We're not ready either in our natural condition. We're just really not. But God is able to see the vessels that you and I can become. And it begins the process to make us into a place where we can be used for God's work. God digs us out, dries us up, washes us clean. The next process of becoming a beautiful vessel, after the clay has been cleansed and processed, it's laid on a table and it's beaten with a wooden mallet. And we're not fond of that, are we? But I know, I know what it feels like. I don't know about you, but in my life, I know a little bit about that. I'm sure all of us do. And that we felt like that. Well, the potter does this to remove any air bubbles that might be trapped in the clay. Because if the potter doesn't do that, the air bubble will form a pocket and it'll produce a weak spot and cause the vessel to be fragile and unusable. So it describes sort of our trials, our hurts, our sorrows, our pains that we encounter in our own lives. The wheel is symbolic of the circumstances and the situations that life brings our way. Life often seems like a large circle, doesn't it? One trial sometimes after another, doesn't it? Sometimes the clay doesn't like to be shaped and it fights back and it wobbles. If you noticed when, uh, when he was cutting that little piece out, it kind of did a little wobble there. And I think sometimes we feel a little bit like that, you know, when we're being reshaped. We get a little wobbly sometimes. It doesn't feel good. It, doesn't, it feels new and different in our shape. But we have to remember that the potter controls the speed of the wheels. And they only rotate according to, to his will. Never forget that God is in control of your life as well. Regardless of what you go through and regardless of what you face. You have to stay on the wheel, don't you? Sometimes we want to jump right off before we're formed into that vessel. But you have to stay on that wheel and allow God to mold you and shape you. And then you have the potter's hands. While the clay spins around on the wheels, you notice it's never out of contact with the potter's hands. Think about that. The potter's in constant control, molding and shaping and bringing the clay along through his guidance. If he were to remove his hand, the clay would spin right off the wheel and all would be lost, all of that work and all of that investment. There's a saying, those who leave everything in God's hand will eventually see God's hand in everything. <laughs> because the potter's hand is resting on the lump of clay, the potter often sees a flaw. He can see everything as it goes around and starts over again. As long as the clay is moldable and pliable in his hand, the potter will reform it until he's able to produce a vessel that satisfies him. 
When the vessel is marred, the potter does not throw the clay away and start fresh with a new piece. And there's a reason for that. He's already invested too much time in salvaging the clay from the soil and preparing it for use. Remember, it's sat there for six months. You don't want to just throw that away. He's a very patient potter, always seeing the finished piece of work of art before it's actually completed. He sees the beauty in that piece of clay, just like what God sees in you and in me. God sees the beauty in our clay as well. Now you think about that oven. The temperature must be so hot that it burns the impurities out of the clay and it creates a new bonded substance. Too much heat, too fast, and it cracks and falls apart. Sometimes the clay thinks it can't take any more heat. But you know what? The potter knows the degree of heat to set it and how long that it must stay in the oven. As the clay, we too have to be able to sing that song every day. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. You are the potter and I am the clay. Mold me and make me after your will while I am waiting, yielded and still. So what do you have? Anybody got a shape yet? And what do you, done it and put it all away in their bag already, look at them. You got a moon, look at that. John made a cross, crosses, a heart, a bowl. Look at Kathy Hannes made a bowl. What'd you make, Dan? A cross. Good. She's got a cross. A, a heart. Did you say, did somebody say they made a guppy? Yeah, a gumby, a gumby. Well, we are a creative bunch, aren't we? <laughs> I hope that you'll take that home with you and that you'll put it somewhere. And maybe every now and then pick it up, maybe even reshape it, make something else out of it. And then it will remind you about who you are. And not so much about who you are, but whose you are. And whose hands that you have to stay in each and every day. And allow God to shape you and mold you. And know that God sees the beautiful vessel that God created called you. Amen and amen. come together this morning for a prayer. 
It's good to think of ourselves, as we learned from Reverend Renee this morning in her sermon, about the potter and his clay. But what works? And who is the potter? The potter is the Holy Spirit. So now if you would please relax, shut your eyes, and listen quietly to a beautiful church song written in the Middle Ages called Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, come, and from your celestial home shed a ray or light divine. Come, consoler of the poor, Come, source of all our store. Come, within our bosom shine. You of comforters, the best. You, the soul's most welcome guest. Sweet refreshment here below. In our labor, rest most sweet. Grateful coolness in the heat. Solace in the midst of woe. O oh, most blessed light divine, shine within these hearts of yours in our inmost being fill. Where you are not, we have not. Nothing good, indeed, our thought. Nothing free from taint or ill. So heal our wounds, our strength renew. On our dryness, Pour your dew. Wash the stains of guilt away. Bend the stubborn heart and will. Melt the frozen. Warm the chill. Guide the steps that go astray on the faithful who adore. And confess you evermore. In your sevenfold gift descend. Give them virtues, sure reward. Give them your salvation, Lord. Give them joys that never end. Amen. Let us pray. Bless us, Lord, with the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, and self-control that these gifts bring us closer to you as we serve each other in our faith community. Loving God, as we gather together as a church family, encircle us with your love and caring. Let us feel your compassion as we unburden our hearts to you. On our prayer wall and in our uh, many, many issues that are unspoken, and we bring these to you in faith. We are indeed keenly aware of our need of your presence and power working in our lives as we make important decisions, try to overcome financial concerns, worry over health issues for ourselves and loved ones or friends. Bring light, assurance, and love to those of us who are grieving the loss of a family member, partner, dear pet, or friend. And we uplift these issues to you and prayfully leave them in your compassionate hand. Send your Holy Spirit to guide us and make us all that we can be let us be your hands and feet as we work together, strengthening our church and each other. Help us to seek first the kingdom of God on this earth as it is in heaven, and to all live in a way that moves the world toward God's dream, where the first are last, where the needy are assisted, and always working and shaping toward a society where all are created equally and all resources are shared. Heal the deep divisions in our national government 
so that they may work more closely together to promote programs for the betterment of all. We lift up our churches across the world as they gather together to worship. Further our denominations outreach as they work toward justice and equality for our people. Be with us also, Lord, as we seek to do your perfect will, and we ask that you have dominion in them and in our church, that all that we do and say would bring honor and glory to you. As we come in the name of your son, Jesus, and we now sing the prayer that Jesus taught us together. Now please stand for that singing. come now to that time when we give back to the Lord. I appreciate Reverend Renee's sermon this morning because I feel like Suncoast MCC has been a lot like that lump of clay. In the past three years we've been hurt. We've endured the loss of our beloved pastor Reverend Sherry Kennedy. We've made many, many changes. But now we stand on the threshold of something wonderful. God is leading us to do more than we've ever done before. We're looking at uh, new signs. We're looking at a new branding. We're looking at a new strategic plan, all of which is going to lift up God and help us to do so much more than we can even imagine. I've never been a fan of the tithe simply because I think it limits us in our giving. Too many of us count out our money every week and we say, well, let's and divide by this and that's 10% and that's what I'm going to give. And that's fine. But sometimes I think God wants us to give more. R.G. Letourneau, it is said, gave 90% of his income to God. Granted, you could live very nicely on the 10% he kept. <laughs> He was a multi-millionaire. Today he would have been a billionaire. But that's just an example. I think he was prosperous because God used him in a very special way. And so I encourage you as you look at your relationship with God to search your heart and ask God how much 
how much can I give? You cannot outgive God. Today we have two offerings. We have our basic offering for the general fund, and then we have the mortgage offering in the second mortgage. And so I pray that you'll search your hearts and you'll give as God has blessed you. Thank you.
Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. You may be seated. <laughs> Almighty God, you shape our hearts and minds. As Jeremiah came to know you in the work of the potter's hands, teach us your ways. Lead us into a deeper understanding that we may know and do your will. So in thanksgiving, we join the heavenly choirs in singing your song of praise. Holy, holy, holy one, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Gracious and loving God, receive our gifts of self and substance. They have belonged to you since our very beginning. We give them freely, joyfully, prayerfully. With them we praise you. With them we celebrate the great power that is love. A love that abides always. A love that radically transforms. A love that makes us whole. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he gathered in the upper room with his disciples and he took an ordinary piece of bread. He held it, he blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to them and he said, take and eat, for this is my body which is given for you. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. In a like manner, he took the cup. After he'd given thanks for it, he gave it to them and he said, drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It is poured out and shared with you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Let us join and sing together. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Let us pray. God, we thank you for these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine. May they become for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, as we individually understand that transformation. We pray that you would bless and anoint these elements for us, the people of God. We thank you, God, for molding us and creating us in your image. Help us to be in communion with you and with one another. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> And we pray by Christ and with, with Christ, Christ and, and in Christ, Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever.
and brothers, what we are about to do is to celebrate the joyful feast of the people of God. Come alone or with family and friends to eat and drink, to be nourished and renewed. This is an open table, and all are welcome regardless of your church membership. If for any reason you prefer not to receive communion, but would like to receive a blessing, or communion without a blessing, let your server know and we will be happy to minister to you in that way. A gluten-free communion station is also available to your far right. The table is ready. Come and receive the gifts of God. Come as you are. Believing as you do.
Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make it whole. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no Fill my cup, fill it up, and make it whole. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul, bread of heaven. Feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make it whole. Almighty God, shaper of people and nations, you are beyond our knowing, yet closer to us than our every breath. You are before us and behind us, surrounding us with your love and fashioning all creation in the secret depths of your heart. With every thought, with every song, and with every prayer, turn these fragile earthen vessels of our lives into the spiritual body of Christ. Amen. Please stand for our closing hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. Sorrows like sea pillows roll. Whatever my heart, you have taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well. trials should come. Let this blessed assurance control that Christ has recorded my helpless estate and has paid life and blood for my soul it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul my sin, oh, the bliss, the bliss my sin not in part, but the whole is named.
nailed to the cross and I hear it no more praise the Lord praise the Lord oh my soul it is well with my soul it is well oh it is well with my soul oh God speed the day that is filled with your light when clouds are rolled back as a scroll, the trumpet shall sound and the Lord shall appear. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well. Gracious God, we are so thrilled to be in your house. We pray, God, this morning that you would take us from this place, pliable and moldable to your will. Help us to stay on the wheel and be your vessels in this world. Amen. Amen. How about one more time? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'll do it alone. When peace like a river attendeth, oh, holds opposed me. When sorrows like sea billows roll. 